This is science meat. FDA approved science meat, of course. It was grown in a vat instead of inside an animal's body. And I'm about to chow down on it. Let's head on in. Okay. This isn't like a soy-based fake meat. It's real meat made from real chicken cells. Right now, dozens of companies are trying to figure out how to grow meat in unconventional ways, and it's beginning to work. Why do this? Concentrated animal agriculture takes a huge toll on the environment. And with the demand for meat expected to skyrocket in the next few decades, well, it's a big problem. Meat is a product that we've loved for thousands of years and the demand for it is doubling. We have to come up with ways to be ingenious and give people what they want in a more efficient package. We can meet this doubling of demand with the production method that is safe, sustainable, a lot more humane. So the question is, why don't we need an opportunity like this to be explored right now with urgency? What if we could grow most or even all of the meat we need with a much smaller impact? What if we could make healthier meat? Or meat that was otherwise impossible to get? Science is about asking questions that you don't know the answers to. It's about recognizing the limitations of society that you have at the time that you must overcome. And what is the science telling you? This is Hard Reset, a series about rebuilding our world from scratch. Welcome to Emeryville, California. It's right next to San Francisco. Pixar is there, there's an Ikea, and a pretty good mall. And this place, a high-tech factory for cultivated meat. This is Uma. He's the founder and CEO of Upside, and we hear he's a blast at birthday parties. <laughs> I grew up in a meat-eating family, loved eating meat. One day, as a kid, I went to a friend's birthday party. We were having fun in the front, and then I walked to the back of the house, and that is where they were slaughtering the animals that were being used to feed the people in the front. It was the birthday, death day, happening at the same time, with incredible joy in the front and incredible suffering in the back. And I think that was the first time I came directly face to face with the duality of meat. I'm a cardiologist by training. During medical school, we would take stem cells re-inject them into the person's heart to regrow the heart muscle. And to me, it felt like, oh my gosh, what if you can take cells from an animal and grow meat from it? What would that be? From a scientific standpoint, cultivated meat is an unbelievably simple idea that's been around for probably as long as people have been eating meat, which is, if I just want a chicken wing, do I need a whole chicken? This is Eric, our tour guide and professional scientist, and I'm gonna guess, basketball player? College basketball, and not very good at it. Anyway, after we got all suited up with these super fashionable beard nets, Eric gave me a tour of the facility where they make the meat. What do you feed the cells? We feed the cells the same thing you and I would eat, except in a much more simplified form. So if we're eating, say meat or protein or starches in like a potato, we just break those down to its components. Amino acids in the case of protein, sugars in the case of starches, vitamins, minerals, those sorts of things. You take cells which are living, and as long as they're fed, kept warm, and given a place to grow without competition from bacteria, they'll continue to grow using their genetic programming. And they will produce the same thing that's in an animal, and then you can eat it. This way you can grow the meat without needing to grow the rest of the animal. No bones, no skin, no nervous system. The only problem with this is that it also doesn't have an immune system. So if bacteria gets into the process, it pretty much ruins the whole batch. And the most important thing, of course, is that once we put anything into the system, it is in fact sterile. We monitor all the different types of bacteria in the air and on the surfaces. Huh. We also monitor what's inside here, but more importantly, what's not here. Right. Bacteria, viruses. Our main line of defense is prevention. Uh, is effectively just never letting bacteria or viruses in. Effectively, we are the immune system in a facility like this. This is important because one of the main advantages of this technology is that you wouldn't need to use antibiotics like we do now in animal agriculture. The moment we take the cells directly from a farm animal, we have to pierce its skin in order to get the cells. There's gonna be bacteria there. We use a small amount of antibiotics to make sure no bacteria transfer into our system. And this is I'm talking about over the course of years before we actually get them into production. Once they're in production, 
We do not use antibiotics at all. Cultivating meat at a small scale has been done for a while, but the challenge for the folks at Upside is how to grow this production up to a commercial scale. And oh, this I'm is happy. great. This is great. So many more tanks. So much more room for activities. In case you missed it, Eric just referenced the classic so movie Step Brothers. So many activities! Which means he and I are about to become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep! This is the production floor. Things that work here get scaled massively up for commercial scale production. Right. So this facility can do up to about 400,000 pounds of cultivated meat per year, which is a lot for yeah. cultivated meat. But in the grand scheme of meat, it's a very small amount. Our commercial facility will be able to do in the tens of millions of pounds of cultivated meat per year. If this can be done at a scale that competes with existing meat production, it'll mean a much cleaner environment. It takes two years to raise a cow before it goes to slaughter. It takes nine months for a pig before it goes to slaughter. And it takes two months for a chicken before it goes to slaughter. It takes us two weeks to grow meat. And everything we make can be eaten. Therefore, we just see first principle advantages that are significantly superior to conventional meat. But for all of this to work, two things need to happen. Companies like Upside need to be able to make this stuff at an affordable price, and people need to want to eat it. So what does it taste like? Let's find out. Currently, Upside's only FDA-approved product is their chicken filet, which is made in a small-scale process to replicate the look and feel of a chicken breast. But they're also replicating ground meat products that can be made at a much larger scale, and I got to taste them all. But before we dived into the tasting, I had a bone to pick. What kind of chicken meat were they cultivating? As you well know, this is an issue we take very seriously at Hard Reset. What is your favorite part of the chicken? Thigh. It would be the thigh. Thigh is the way to go. Right. Why didn't they start with the thigh? Why chicken breast and not chicken thigh? Why chicken breast meat and not chicken thigh meat? Chicken thigh is by far the superior meat. Fully agree with you. Okay. Western palates prefer chicken breast. Do they? Western palates, when they think chicken, our research shows they want white meat. They want breast meat. It is also a lot of the meat that's put into chicken nuggets. That was just the familiar cut that people wanted. However, our chicken breast meat has intentionally some dark meat character added into it on purpose in the form of connective tissue that prevents it from overcooking. And I think it sort of redeemed it. The people wanted it, so we're giving it to them. Make better choices, America. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the optimal preparation for most chicken is fried yes, and, yeah, and yeah. breaded. So that's the breakfast sausage. The ground product, is that correct? Yeah. The only animal product in there is chicken cells. Oh my gosh. Your breakfast sandwich. Thank you. All right. So this is my first bite of cell cultivated chicken. This was also apparently my first bite of solid food. Oh my goodness, there's at least three pounds of cheese in my beard. I, I promise you, I do know how to eat. I'm just not sure what happened this day. That tastes really good. <laughs> How much was that was in my mustache is what I want to know. Uh, quite a lot, as it turns out. How much does this cost compared to an equivalent product at a restaurant? Our goal is to put it at about 30% or so price premium to start with. Okay. We have no... No, please don't zoom in on... Oh, please. Ugh, finally. Uh, I'm sorry, what were you saying, Uma? The cost of making this inevitably will be cheaper than conventional, but that's going to take time as we scale. Right. And I think that sweet spot, it's going to be hard to exactly predict, but it's going to be five years plus. So here we have our upside chicken pot stickers. Amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut into this guy. It tastes really good. Apparently my vocabulary for describing food is limited to really good. It's really good. This is really good. It's really good. That's why I'm not the one handing out Michelin stars, folks. Watch out, Chick-fil-A. <laughs> really good. I'm so very articulate. Anyway, the food we ate was delicious, but let's be honest. Even a coffee mug that has been breaded, deep fried, and served with a nice runny egg would be pretty tasty. So I made a point of trying the meat on its own, without all the extra stuff, and yeah, it, it tasted really good. You can definitely see the fibers in there. It tastes exactly like you expect it to, and in your mouth it chews apart the way you expect it meat to. It tastes really good. I was really hung up on like, why breast meat and not thigh meat, but this is really good breast meat. So <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's really tasty. I can't stress enough that it tastes and feels just like the meat I've known all my life. 
It's somewhat weird that this bleeding edge food technology is all about trying to replicate a familiar experience. If they succeed, it'll be indistinguishable from what you already know. So what would the future look like with this technology at scale? Picture a scenario where we restart meat production from scratch. Animal agriculture would probably still be right at the center of this new system. At the right level of density, animal agriculture can be really good for maintaining some ecosystems. But we'd hopefully say goodbye to concentrated feedlots. The cells from these animals could be harvested and used to grow millions of pounds of meat, all while the animals themselves are alive and kicking. We do not have to have the intense animal agriculture or confined animal feeding operations where we put millions of animals in small areas. We can have regenerative agriculture where animals are roaming freely. They don't have this intense confinements. We can have cultivated meat be the industry that can supply delicious, high-quality meat for the largest amount of population with the lowest amount of impact. If we saw the end of slaughterhouses without losing our access to the meat they provide, I don't think many people would feel bad about that. I have not met a single person to date that walked out of a slaughterhouse and said, I love this process. Most people leave feeling somewhat scarred or conflicted. And the meat we make might be healthier for us too where the proteins and fats are all optimized for our health. The idea of, of customizing the product is the holy grail of this whole industry. Maybe one of these days we're making the nutritions of like a salmon filet, but in a red meat product, or a type of meat we can't even imagine. Eric might not want to say it out loud, but I think we all know it's dinosaur meat that people want. Dinosaur thigh meat. <laughs> the production of meat could be done at a much more manageable scale where cultivators could operate in any neighborhood, eliminating the need to ship meat over long distances like we do now. If we continue to produce meat in the way we do now, we will unfortunately have to make a choice between existing as a species or giving up the choices we really love. The answer is we need it right now. We need it right now, we needed it 50 years ago, but the technology did not exist. The technology exists now and we need to get ahead if you want to distill science at its core, it's a very empathetic position. You acknowledge the reality that you are a product of the time in which you are, and you try to envision a world in which you want to be in scientifically. How do you get there? When you can't reach it, it just becomes sci-fi. And when you can reach it, it becomes a place like this that we're sitting in right now. It becomes a meat processing facility making meat without an animal. I'm looking down the barrel because I want you to listen to me. Thigh meat is the superior meat. Thigh meat is the superior meat. All right, to your question. 